Today's a beautiful day. I'm going to soak up some sun. Ah, that's too much sun. Why is it so hot? Ryan? Yeah? Are you out here in the sun without some sunscreen? This is not good for you. Now put out your hand. Hey, you always need sunscreen when you go outside. It'll protect you from the sun. But Mommy, can you tell me more about the sun? Of course, I'll tell you all about it. Now put on your sunscreen. Okay. So this is the sun. Whee! Most stars are sphere-shaped like our sun. A sphere is an object that is completely round in shape, like a ball. But did you know the sun is a star like this? All the other stars look like this and this and this. They all look like little sparks in the sky only because they're so far, far away from us. Did you know that our sun is just an average sized star? There are bigger stars in the universe and there are smaller stars in the universe. There are about 100 billion to 400 billion stars just in our galaxy, which is called the Milky Way. Nope, not that Milky Way, this Milky Way. A star like our sun it's a giant ball of gas, look. But what kind of gas? Let's go visit Mr. Sun himself and ask. Oh, hi there, Mr. Sun. Oh, hi. I have a question for you. I love questions. I don't get many visitors up here, you know. What are you made of? I am made of mostly hydrogen gas and also some helium gas. Helium? Like the gas we put in balloons to make them float? You're right. I'm also made of other gases like oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. But I'm mainly hydrogen gas. Oh, wow. That is so cool. There you have it. From Mr. Sun himself, the sun is mainly made out of hydrogen gas. But it's getting so hot here. Oh, I don't want to burn out, so I'm going to go back down to Earth. Bye, Mr. Sun. Bye. Wow, what a cool little earthling. So this is the solar system. Did you notice what's in the center of the solar system? What? It's this big object. Why? That's the sun. And did you notice how it's the biggest object in the whole solar system? Wow. And can you find Earth? It's right there. There's Earth. That's our planet. Did you notice how the Earth revolves around the sun? That means all the planet goes around the sun. So this is our planet Earth. Like all the other planets in the solar system, it orbits the sun like this. Whoa. Did you know it actually takes about 365 days for the Earth to go around the sun? Whoa. star to Earth. That's why when you look outside, you can kind of see its round, spherical shape. But all the other stars look like little sparks in the sky because, again, they're so far, far away from us. Even though the sun is the closest star to us, it's still about 93 million miles away from us. So, if I have a flying car, to the sun at 93 miles per hour, it will still take me 1 million hours to get to the sun. So we know that the sun is made up of burning hot gases like hydrogen gas. But how hot is the sun? Hot, 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 hot. I'll let heck explain it to you because I'm not going back to the sun again. It's way too hot for a penguin to be out here. But I'll do anything in the name of science. Did you know the surface of the sun is about 10,000 Fahrenheit or 5,600 Celsius? As you get closer to the core or the center of the sun, it gets way hotter. It can reach about 27 million Fahrenheit. 
for 15 million Celsius. Oh, hey, Kambu. Nice to see you on this side of the universe. Want to hear a joke? Uh, sure. Why did the sun go to school? Um, why? To get brighter. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, Peck. Uh, I'm going to go explore more over there. Way over there. Okay, so here are some boiling water. But remember, only grown-ups should boil water. Let's see. What is the temperature that water boils at, okay? Right. Wow, water boils at 112 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. Even the oven, look, it only goes up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Nowhere close to the sun's temperature at all, right? Have you ever wondered what life would be like without the sun? Well, for one, it would be very, very cold. And it would be very, 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 very dark. Oh, hello? Hello, anybody there? Ah, what's that noise? Ah, oh, it's just Mr. Chicken. I knew the sun would be useful. So, why is the sun so important to us? Well, the sun provide us with light and heat, which means they provide us lots and lots of energy. And without the sun's energy, we would not be able to survive. Almost everything here on Earth, like this organism, this, and even this, depends on the sun's energy in some way to survive. This is a plant. And plants like this needs the sun's energy to make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Say it with me. Photosynthesis. Photo means light and synthesis means to put together. So photosynthesis means using the light's energy to make their own food. How cool is that? Animals, including humans like us, need plants for food. And we also need the oxygen that the plants produce. But without sunlight energy, plants can't survive. Also, without the sun, everything would be so cold and everything here on Earth would freeze like this. Oh. <gasps> Yay for sunlight. Humans can also take the sun's light and turned it into electricity called solar power. Say it with me, solar power. These are solar panels. Solar panels captures the sunlight energy and turn them into power. Solar power is wonderful because there's pretty much an endless supply of sunlight. Also, solar power doesn't cause pollution. Woohoo! Did you know that you can also use the sun's energy to make your own s'mores? So as you can see, it's really bright outside. Now we're gonna use all of the sunlight to cook our s'mores. Now we just have to adjust this panel to get it just right. Ooh, that looks really good right there. All we have to do now is just wait for the s'mores to melt. One hour later. All right, Bree, let's check out our results. All right, let's see. Do 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 do. Oh, ooh, these look so good. So of course, to make us more, you have to smush them together like this. Oh man, look at all of that ooey gooeyness. Yeah, kill mm, me. That looks so good. Let's try it out. Oh, I'm making a mess everywhere. Mmm, this is really good. Mm-hmm. Awesome job. Now I'll go deliver it. Bye, Bree. Bye. Combo Panda presents. The small. This is so yummy. Combo Bunga. Solar energy rocks. Combo, thank you so much. But how is solar energy able to cook the s'mores? We used foil in this box to capture sunlight to heat up the s'mores. I can't believe it works. Maybe next time I'm gonna use solar power to bake a cookie. Whoa. 
now that we know so much about the sun, are you ready for a quiz? Of course you are, let's go. Question number one, what is the sun? Is it A, a star? Is it B, a giant bubble in the sky? Or is it C, a moon? Did you get the answer? That's right, the answer is A, the sun is a star. Question number two, what is the sun mainly made out of? Is it A, glitter? Is it B, hydrogen gas? Or is it C, water? Did you get the answer? It is B, the sun is mainly made out of hydrogen gas. Question number three, what would the weather be like here on Earth without the sun? Would it be A, bright and shiny? Oh. Would it be B, cold and dark? Hello? I can't see anything. Or would it be C, hot but windy? Oh, so much wind. Did you get the answer? It is C. Without the sun, the weather here on Earth will be very dark and icy cold. Ugh. Now that we learned so much about the sun, let's go and tell Ryan. Let's go. Look, guys, look at what I made. It's power from the sun. Whoa, Ryan, what is this? It's a card that is powered by the sun. Whoa, nice. Good job, Ryan. You learned that you can power a remote control car using solar energy. <gasps> that is awesome. All right, but is it strong enough to catch me? <laughs> it is. <laughs> get me, get me. <laughs> nice. Okay, guys, thank you for learning about the sun with me. Bye. Remember, always stay happy and rise up. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Oh. These are so yummy. But I wonder, where does it go when you eat it? Mommy! Yes, Ryan? Where does food go when you eat it? Well, first off, Ryan, after you eat some yummy food, it goes in your mouth, down your esophagus, into your stomach, and travels through your large intestines. Wait! What? What does it all mean? Okay, Ryan, let me explain the organs in your body, okay? Oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, not this again. Okay, everyone, we have to find a way to show Ryan which organs we have in our body. If only we have a volunteer. Hmm. Hi, Luann. Oh, hi. Combo. He's perfect. Uh-oh. I just wanted to know if I could borrow some Robux. What did I just walk into? We're going to help Ryan learn different organs and how they function. This sounds... How about if you help me, I'll give you all the Robux that I have. Combo Bunga! All right, what do I got to do? I have an idea. Come on. Uh, the things I do for Robux. Eureka! <laughs> My Oregon Scanner 9000 is ready. <gasps> Yay, thanks, Peck. Anytime. I love to help in the name of science. <laughs> See you later. Okay, Combo, stand right over there. Last time I trusted a peck invention, I was trapped in a time machine. Whoa, I can see all my organs. Yes, it worked. Okay, let's point out what we can see. Combo, do you know which organs are which? Um, I can see a heart and something that looks like it's eating my stomach, and two giant beans. I don't remember eating giant beans, though. Okay, how about we try this? We can go through each organ one at a time. Well, okay, good. 
That sounds a lot less overwhelming. Okay, let's start with the heart. Do you know what the heart does, Combo? I know that one. It goes thump thump, right? Well, yeah. Those thumps are rhythmic contractions that pump blood into all parts of your body. Combo Funga, I was right. But did you know there's two sides to the heart? No, I didn't. Yep, there's a right side and there's a left side. Come on, I'll show you in an experiment, Combo. Okay. Hey, this isn't a heart. I know, but this will show us how both sides of the heart work. So we have all this oxygen empty blood and it pumps from the right atrium to the right ventricle and into the lungs. The lungs gives the blood oxygen and turns the blood red. Now that we have this red blood, it gets pumped from the lungs into the left atrium, then it goes to the left ventricle and finally out through the rest of the body. Whoa, so it pumps through one side, gets oxygen, then takes the oxygen everywhere in the body? Yup. So I have one question. Where exactly does the lungs get this oxygen from? Good question, Combo. I'll show you, come on. So when you breathe, you are using your lungs. Inhale. Exhale. <sighs> it's the lungs' job to take the oxygen in your body and remove <sighs> carbon dioxide from your body. So that's what happens when we breathe? I get it now. That's right. And I know just the experiment for this. <gasps> Let's go, Combo. Whoa, is that supposed to be our lungs? Yup, this bottle is like our body and the balloons inside is like our lungs. So, we'll be able to see the lungs expand with oxygen and then shrink when releasing carbon dioxide. Yeah, see, look. Do you see how the airs are going into the lungs? That's so cool. Uh-oh, sounds like someone is hungry. Yeah, I think it's time for a snack. Okay, Combo, we can eat and learn. As long as I get to eat. Mm, that was delicious. Okay, are you ready to learn about the stomach now? Well, mine is full, so learn away. Okay, so when Combo ate his food, the food went from his mouth down his throat and into his stomach, right? Once it gets to the stomach, it is the stomach's job to store the food, digest the food, and then mix the food. How does it do all that? I'm happy you asked. Combo, let's do... An experiment? Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, so it looks like we get to snack on some crackers and wash it down with some orange juice. This might be my favorite experiment yet. Not exactly, Combo. Aw, man. So, this bag is like our stomach. And let's say today we ate some crackers. So far, so good. Okay, so you're eating the crackers. Now, these crackers are kind of salty. So we want to wash it down with some water. Here we are, drinking some water. It's going into our stomach. Ooh. It's looking kind of gross in there. Yes, it does look gross. And once all your food make it into your stomach, your stomach has to digest it. Digest? How does it do that? Our stomach has juice inside called stomach acid that will break down our food. So, we will use orange juice to show stomach acid. Here's the stomach acid. Oh. Ew. Hang in there. We're gonna close it and mash it all up, just like how our stomach digests and mix our food together. Wow. What do you think? 
Okay, can we move on to another organ? My stomach is getting a little queasy now. Okay, Combo, let's move on to the liver. Okay, so this liver thing that's bigger than my stomach, what does it do? Your liver cleans your blood. It's the liver's biggest job. Cleaning blood? Yeah, your liver is smart. It knows what's good and bad for your body. It keeps your blood clean by controlling nutrients in three ways. Number one, it helps us absorb good nutrients. Number two, it removes bad nutrients. And number three, it can also turn bad nutrients into something that our body can use. So, if I eat a bunch of chicken nuggets? If you eat chicken nuggets, your liver will notice that there's protein in it. Combo, you want to try it with a real liver experiment? Real liver? Uh, sure. If my stomach can take another experiment. So, we have a liver here. Are you ready to witness the liver in action? I've got to see this. So, this is hydrogen peroxide. And people use the hydrogen peroxide to prevent infection, like if you have like a minor cut or burn. But this is actually bad for the liver. Watch. Whoa, look at that. What's that? What just happened? What happened to the hydrogen peroxide? So what happened, Combo, is the liver splits into two parts. So when you have liver and you pour hydrogen peroxide on it, it converted itself into water and oxygen. So that's why you see the little bubble there. We put a balloon on top so we can see how much oxygen gets released. Okay, watch this combo. So, the hydrogen peroxide is in the balloon. We're gonna let it go. And then we have a piece of liver on the bottom. Do you guys see that? Let's see what will happen. So the liver converted the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen, and guess what happened to the balloon? Because oxygen is a gas, and so it inflates the balloon. Look at that. That's cool. Okay, this is cooler than I thought. Which organ is next? The kidney will be our last organ combo. Come on. Okay, so you should have a pair of kidneys. A right one and a left one. Both of mine are accounted for, right? Yes, Combo. Both of your kidneys are there. Okay, good. And why do we have them? They balance the body's fluid by removing waste oh, and extra fluids from your body in the form of urine. So, what if I just drank a giant cup of water before standing here? I'll say you probably really need a bathroom break soon. You are absolutely right. I'll, uh, I'll meet you at the next experiment. Uh, gotta go, gotta go. Okay, let me explain to you guys our experiment while we wait for combo. Wait, I'm here, wait. Okay, so you were saying. Okay, so. We're gonna take our colored water, we're gonna fill up our two kidneys, and it will come out of our kidneys into our bladder as urine. Okay, here it goes. Into our kidneys, Whee! And into our bladder. The color was removed. Just like how our kidneys removed waste and our urine fill up the bladder. Wow, I learned so much about my organs. You did a great job, Combo, and you earned your Robux. Oh yeah, how can I forget? Thanks, Luann. You're welcome, and thank you for helping us learn all about our organs in our body. Okay, say hi to Ryan for me. Now I'm gonna go play some Roblox. Okay, thank you, Combo, have fun. Okay, guys, now let's take a pop quiz to see how much we remember about our organs. Let's go. Question number one. What is the function of your heart? Is it A, 
to pump blood throughout your body? Or is it B, to grow fingernails? Or is it C, to ask for snacks? Did you get the answer? The answer is A. The function of your heart is to pump blood through your body. Good job, heart. Question number two. Which organs help bring oxygen into our body and remove carbon dioxide from our body? Is it A, our toes? Or is it B, our lungs? Or is it C, our knee? Did you get it? The answer is B, lungs. The organs that bring oxygen into our body and remove carbon dioxide from our body are lungs. Question number three. What does your stomach do to the food that you eat? Is it A, takes food on vacation? Or is it B, stores, digests, and makes food? Or is it C, make it watch TV? <laughs> Did you get the answer? It is B. Your stomach stores, digests, and makes food that you eat. Question number four. Which organs clean your blood? Is it A, your foot? Or is it B, your eyeball? Or is it C, your liver? Did you get the answer? It is C, liver. The organs that clean your blood is your liver. And question number five. Kidneys produce what? Is it A, urine? B, pizza? Or C, ice cream? Did you get the answer? The answer is A. Kidney produce urine. You guys did an awesome job. Let's go back and tell Ryan. So that's everything you need to know about major organs in your body. Thank you, Mommy, for telling me about major organs in my body, but you took my food. Oh, sorry. Here you go. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Bye. Remember, always stay happy and rise up. Hey, guys, watch this cool magic trick I learned. Whoa, it's so cool, isn't it? But why does this happen? Mommy! Oh, hey, Ryan, what's wrong? Why is the magnet sticking to the iron filing? <gasps> oh, that's really cool because it sticks because of this thing called magnetism. Get it? Magnetism? Huh? What, what's that? I'll explain it to you. Come on. Okay. Magnetism is the force that attracts magnetic objects like iron. Let's take a look. Here, I have some iron fillings. Here, we have a magnet. Look. Oh, see how it attracts the iron? Oh, that looks super cool. This is a giant magnet. A magnet is just a piece of rock or a metal that will attract objects that has a strong magnetic force. Take a look. Here, we have some nails. You ready? Whoa. Miss one. attraction is so strong that it's so hard for it to even come off. Look at this. Whoa. This is a hammer. It's also attracted to magnet. Watch. You ready? Put it down. Okay. Whoa. Guys, look. Do not try this at home. Look how strong it is. Okay. I have to use all my force to pull this apart. 
Wow, they really are attracted to each other. Ah. So the big question is, does magnet stick to all objects? Let's find out. Okay, here we have a giant egg. Does a magnet, you think, will attract to the egg? Let's see. Oh, it does not. So this egg is made out of plastic, so it does not attract to a magnet. What about this key? Will the magnet attract to the key? Let's see. Ah! So the magnet is not attracted to the actual key, but it does to the key ring, look. Next, we have a pencil. Do they attract each other? Let's see. Ah, oh, it does not, look. Not at all. What about this fork? Do you think the magnet is attracted to this fork? Let's see. <gasps> Whoa, it does! Look at this, that's so cool. Next, we have a feather. Oh, that tickles. Will they attract each other? Let's see. Ah, oh, it did not, it fell off, look. They do not attract each other. Next, we have a sponge. What do you think? Attract or not? <laughs> it did not. Okay, what about some paper clips? Let's see if the magnet will attract to the paper clip. Okay, it's ready. Whoa, look. They are attracted to each other. about some weight, my uh, one pound weight. Are they attracted to each other? Let's see. Okay, so you can't really tell, but there is a weak attraction. But, what if we pull out the giant magnet and see? Whoa! The dumbbell is magnetic. Look at that. Yeah. So based on a fun experience, we can see that magnets are only attracted to objects made out of metal. But not all metals. Magnets are only attracted to strong metals like iron, cobalt, and nickel. A magnet will not stick to glass. It doesn't stick to paper either, look. No matter what color I pick. Magnet doesn't stick to wood either, look. It also doesn't stick to plastic either, see? Or anything else that doesn't have metal. But remember, magnet doesn't attract to all metal. Here is copper wire. It's not magnetic at all. Magnets only attract strong metals like iron, cobalt, nickel, and even steel. Look. So objects that are attracted to a magnet, like these, are called magnetic objects. And objects that do not attract to a magnet are called non-magnetic objects. All magnets have a magnetic field that you can't see. It's invisible to us. The magnetic field is like a force field. However, if a magnetic object is inside the magnetic field, it will pull objects towards the magnet. Look! Magnets have two poles. The north of the magnet, or the end pole, or the south pole of the magnet, or the S pole. The poles of the magnet is where the force is the strongest. Look, if I put it to the side, it doesn't pick up as much iron as if when I point to the pole. You have two magnets and you put one end that is the north pole and the other end that is the south pole together look what happened they attract each other but what do you think will happen if I put both in that are north pole together oh no 
They don't attract at all. Do you know what they're doing? Let's see, look. They're repelling one another. Then what happened if I do south and south? Do they do the same thing? It's trying to say, get away, get away from me. They also repel each other. So only opposites attract. If you have a north pole at one end, the other needs to be a south pole. See? If you cut a magnet in half, the two smaller magnets will also have a north and south pole. Did you know that the Earth is like one giant magnet? So it also have a north and south pole. Ever seen a compass like this? If you're lost in the woods, or maybe in your backyard, you can use the compass to guide you. It will always point towards north. Okay, all right, uh-huh. Uh-huh, north is that way, so uh-huh. So my house is not north, so keep going. Opposite of north, uh-huh. Keep going. Oh, see, I knew a compass would help me. I'm home. Some compass has a needle that is usually made out of a strong magnetic metal like iron. The needle also have a north and south pole. It's made so the pointy part always points north to the north of the Earth's magnetic field. So magnets can look pretty cool and fun. Whoa. Magnets actually have real life application too. Look, the refrigerator door also uses magnet to help you open and close. Look. Here, you see a junkyard crane using magnets to help move scrap steel, which contains iron from one place to another. So now that we learned some basic concepts about magnets, look. Let's take a quiz. Question number one. Which one of these three objects will be attracted to the magnet? Paper, hair clip, or a brush? What do you guys think? Did you get the answer? It will be paper clip, look. Wow. That means the paper clip must be made out of metals that are attracted to the magnet. If I put one end of the magnet that is the south pole and another magnet that is the south pole together, will they attract or repel one another? Let's see. Did you guys see the answer? They totally repel one another. Look, I can't even put them together. It has to be opposite attracts. If one end is a south pole, the other one needs to be the north pole. See? Question number three. What is the field around the magnet called? Is it A, a soccer field? Is it B, a fun field? Or is it called C, a magnetic field? Did you get it? The answer is C. The field around the magnet is called a magnetic field. But it's invisible, so we can't actually see it. Now that we've learned all about magnets, let's go find Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, where are you? Ryan, wait a minute. What is happening? How's the magnet moving by itself? <gasps> wait a minute. Thank you for learning magnets with us. Remember, always stay happy and rise up. Bye! Bye, Flo! <laughs> Bye! Bye! Hey guys, I'm gonna play soccer with myself. It's not moving very much. Hmm, let me try again. Yeah, it's definitely not moving very much. Mommy! What is it, Ryan? Can you help me kick the ball? Sure, let's do it. Okay. All right, three, two, one. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Yeah, we put yeah. the ball in motion. Woohoo! Wait. Wait, Mommy, what's motion? Motion means moving. Together, we put enough force to move the ball. But what is force? A force is a push or a pull. 
You know what? I'll show you guys. Come on. Wait. Huh? Where'd you go? Huh? So, when we say something that is in motion, that means it's moving. So, for example, I'm in motion. See? Motion. And jumping is motion. I'm moving. Here, Gus and Alpha are playing tag. Tag, you're it. They are in motion. That means they're moving. When Ryan is sliding down the slide, he is in motion. He's moving. When Emma and Kate are on the swing, they are in motion. They are moving. When Ryan is playing bowling, the ball is in motion. The ball is moving. Nice, that was good! When birds are flying in the sky, they are in motion. The birds are moving. When a fish is swimming, it's in motion. The fish is moving. When Daddy fell into the pool, Hey, Sean! He is also in motion. Uh-oh. So, if motion means moving, Something that is not in motion means it's at rest. Here, books are on a desk. They are at rest. Here, Combo is sleeping. He's at rest. Now, Ryan paws Daddy. So, Daddy is not moving. That means Daddy is at rest. Why, Daddy, you're going so slow. Here, rocks are just sitting outside. They are at rest, not in motion. So class, what's the difference between an object in motion and an object not in motion? Anyone? Uh, Anyone? Uh, Ooh, me, me. Combo? Oh, here. Uh, here. Uh, Gil? Me, me, me. I my Alpha? Oh, 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 oh. Gus? Hey, me, me, me. Peck, you look like you have your hand up. Force. That's right, good job, Peck. It is force. A force is a push or a pull. For example, here Daddy and Ryan both use force, a push, to move the giant ball. Here Ryan uses force, a push, to knock down the dominoes. One, two, three. Ah! Yeah, for you guys. <laughs> Daddy uses force to pull on the wagon to take Ryan, Emma, and Kate for a ride. Daddy also uses force, a push of the ball, to hit the target. And Ryan went into the water. Here, Emma and Kate both use force to push and pull each other up and down the seesaw. When you kick the ball, you place force on the ball, which makes it move. Let's look. Okay. Here it is, a little force. The amount of force you place on the ball makes a difference. Watch. Okay, here's the ball. I'm gonna use greater force. You guys ready? Say, yeah! Since I put more force on the green ball, it went further than the red ball. Look! A rubber band is also a good example of force. When you pull on a rubber band, force that you pull will come back at you. But be careful not to use too much force. Using force, let's make a swing shot using a rubber band. First, fold the small paper like this. Then fold the paper on top of the rubber band. Pull with enough force to launch the rocket and knock down the goal. Score. So, let's recap. An object could be in motion or it could be at rest. Using force, which is a push or a pull, you can put an object that was at rest in motion. Combo uses a force of one, while Alpha Lexa uses a force of three. Which way will the box move? That's right, towards combo. 
the greater force will put the box in motion. Let's try another example. Gus and Combo are playing tug of war. Gus pulls with the force of two. Combo also pulls with the force of two. Since they both pull with the same amount of force, the object will not move. It will remain at rest. Greater or stronger force may cause faster motion. Look, I'm putting a lot of force. <gasps> Whoa, look at it go. This means that force does not always cause movement. Balanced forces does not cause motion. Now that you know all about force and motion, it's time for a quiz. Question number one. Which one of these is an example of motion? Combo Panda skateboarding. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, Combo Bunga, I did it. Woohoo! A ball sitting outside. A cup on top of a table. That's right, the answer is A. Combo Panda skateboarding. He was in motion. That means he is moving. Whoa! Question number two. What is the word that means a push or a pull? Is it A, peekaboo? Or is it B, force? Or is it C, spaghetti? Did you get it? It is B, force. A force means that is a push or a pull. Question number three. If Robo Combo pushes a box with the force of two and Combo pushes the box in the opposite direction but with the force of five, which way will the box move? That's right, towards Robo Combo because Combo's force is greater. Okay, so now we learned all about forces and motion. Let's go back and tell Ryan, let's go. Okay guys, I'm gonna pull. So Ryan, that's everything you need to know about force and motion. Yeah, I'm gonna use my force right now and I'm gonna put this ball in motion. Thank you for watching. Remember, always stay happy and rise up. Bye. Ryan, I'm gonna put forces on you. Yeah. Hi guys, today we're doing the taste test. Okay, Ryan, close your eyes. Okay, take a bite. Okay. Ugh, sour, super sour. It's a lemon, so I was right. Good job in using your senses to figure out the taste. Wait, Mommy, how many senses are there? There are five senses, Ryan. Let me tell you all about it. Okay. Uh, where'd you go? Did you know our five basic senses help us experience the world around us? Humans have five basic senses. Can you guess what they are? Number one, we have a sense of touch. Mm. Number two, we have a sense of taste. Mm. Number three, smell. Number four, hearing. Oh, so loud. Number five, sight. Oh. And 
with all five of these help us experience what is going on around us in different ways. Let's check out this map to see what our five basic senses are. For our first basic sense, touch. Let's see what we can find at home. For instance, our sense of touch allowed us to feel things like the temperature when it's hot or cold outside. Also, we can feel pain like when you step on a Lego. Ah, ow! And we can feel different textures like slime that are gooey and sticky. Oh, oops. For our next basic sense, how about we go on a tasty picnic? Our sense of taste allowed us to taste flavors. For instance, chocolate tastes sweet. Mmm. Lemons oh, taste sour. Ugh, so sour. And chips oh, taste salty. Now let's check out a movie at the Smelly Cinema. Our sense of smell allows us to tell if there is good or bad odor. <laughs> we can smell some mm, delicious popcorn. And you can also smell someone's stinky shoe. Woo! Ooh, ew! I think we have smelled enough. Time to head into Sound City. Our sense of hearing allows us to hear different sounds. If you hear chirping, a bird can be close by. You can also hear someone's playing an instrument or a fire truck coming down the streets with the siren on. Do you guys hear that? For our last basic set, we need to see. Time to go to sight school. Sight allows us to recognize things around us. We can see different colors, like a shirt could be yellow or red. We can also see motion, like if someone tossed an apple to us, we can see when it's close enough to catch it. <gasps> I caught it! Mm. So I used my sense of sight to see the apple, I can also see that it's red. My sense of smell, mmm, it's telling me that this apple smells so sweet. With my sense of touch, I can tell you that the texture is smooth. It doesn't make any sound by itself, but if I were to pat it, it gives me a soft tapping sound. And, mmm, with my sense of taste, I can say that it tastes sweet. Now let's put all our senses to a test with what's in the box challenge. Let's go. I'm ready to test out my five senses with what's in the box challenge. Let's get started. Okay. Ooh. Whoa! Oh. It's c c cold and it's long. Hmm. I think my sense of touch is telling me that it's a popsicle. Am I right? Yay! It is a popsicle! Yeah! All right. Let's move on to the next one. Cold. Oh, it's a straw. 
so I guess this is testing my sense of taste. Okay, let's try this. Oh, my sense of taste is telling me that it must be Diet Coke. Am I right? Let's see. Well, I am right! Yeah, another point for me. Whoa, so I'm thinking this one is testing my sense of smell. Something very strong, I can smell it. Let's see. Um, definitely not broccoli. I think it is. Mmm, onion, am I right? It is onion! Ooh. Okay, let's see what's in this box here. Oh, there's so many buttons. Maybe it's testing my sense of touch. All right, let's press a button and see. Oh, I know this one, it's a nursery rhyme. Do you guys know this one? It's Old MacDonald Had a Farm! E-I-E-I-O. Yay! Okay, last one. I'm finally able to flip it over. Oh, I think this is testing our sense of sight. It says spot the difference. Okay, do you guys see anything different? Oh, look, his bow tie, they're different color. One is orange and one is red. Anything else? Oh, his snowflakes, they're different too. One is a solid and one has circles in them. Anything else? Oh, look, his shoe! One peck has no shoe and the other one has cool sneaker shoes. Well, we did it, you guys! We use our five senses to complete the what's in the box challenge! Now that we know all about our five senses, let's do a pop quiz. Question number one. Why do we have basic senses? Is it because of A, to experience the world around us? Or is it because of B, to ride a bike? Or is it because of C, to go on vacation? Hawaii. Did you get the answer? It is A. We have basic senses so we can experience and enjoy the world around us. Question number two. Two. How many basic senses do we have? Is it A, 50? Or is it B, five senses? Or is it C, a hundred senses? Did you know the answer? It is B, five. We have five basic senses. Question number three. What are the five basic senses? Is it A, hungry, bad, happy, sneezy, and grumpy? Mm. Or is it B, touch, taste, smell, hearing, and sight? Or is it because of C, math, science, reading, gym, and history? Did you get the answer? What are the five basic senses? It is B, touch, taste, smell, hearing, and sight. There it is, our pop quiz. Good job if you get it right, and if you didn't, it's okay. You can try again next time. For now, let's go tell Ryan about everything that we learned about our five senses. Let's go. So Ryan, those are your five senses. Mommy, it's your turn to use your sense of touch. Close okay. Your okay. Okay, touch it. Oh! What is this? It's so cold. Oh, it's slimy. You're correct. It's slime. Oh, I was right. Whoa. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching Ryan's World video. Bye. Remember, always stay happy and ride. Oh, I'm playing with Ooblack. Ooh. But mommy, is Ooblack a solid 
or a liquid. But why do you ask? Because it drips like a liquid, but when I punch it, it acts like a solid. <gasps> Ryan, Oobleck is actually a liquid and a solid at the same time. Whoa. Let me show you guys why. Well, me. Did you know that matter is anything with the mass and occupied space? So I'm a matter, and you're a matter too. And there are three types of matter. Solid, like this ice. Oh, cold, cold, ah. Liquid, like this watercolor. Ah. Or gas. Oh, hold on. Oh, there we go. Now the balloon is full of air, which is gas inside. Look. Whoa. But why are there three states of matter? Well, it's because the particles in solid, liquid, and gas are all different. For example, solid, like this ball, has particles that keep its shape and volume. Oh, this is also a solid, right? It keeps its shape and volume. Hey, this is also a solid, keeping same shape and volume. Whoa. I'm okay. Liquids, however, have particles that are free to move around. It keeps the same volume, but different shape. For example, this liquid here, look what happened. Whoa. See, it keeps the shape of the container, but it's the same amount of volume. Now, let's put the liquid into a different shape container. This is a shape of a bowl, and now, this is the shape of this cylinder. Gas have particles that are so loose, they have no definite shape or volume. So this, I have dry ice, and I'm gonna mix it in with water. And look, it produces carbon dioxide gas. It just goes everywhere, filling up the whole room. Whoa! Look at the gas flow! But what happens with things like slime? Is this a solid or is it a liquid? Before we explain what is slime, let's make our own special kind called oobla. All you need is cornstarch, this food coloring, and water. Pour it inside a bowl. Let's make our watercolor green. Ooh, that's pretty. Get a spoon, agitate it, then pour it into our cornstarch. Mix it up. Now this is really cool, because look, if you pick it up, it looks like a liquid, see? Liquid! But what happened if you tap it like this? Whoa! It was hard, like cement. And again, one, two, three. Whoa. But if I do it slowly, it's a liquid, what's going on? So is slime, like ooh black, is this a solid or a liquid? Well, this is a special kind. It's called non-Newtonium liquid. But what is a non-Newtonium liquid? Well, it can behave as a solid when pressure is applied like this, or it could behave like a liquid when pressure is not applied. Pretty cool stuff, huh? I have an idea. Why don't we mix it up and add glitter and other things to our old black? Wow. Some pom poms and some glitter. There, let's mix it up. Whoa, look how cool this looks. Wow. There it is, your own non-Newtonium liquid. Is it a solid or is it a liquid? Both. When you're done playing with your Oblack, do not 
pour it down the sink or else it might clog the sink. You can either pour it in the trash or you can save it in a Ziploc bag so you can play with it for later. So to recap, the three states of matter are solid, which has a definite volume and a definite shape, like this ball is a circle. Hey! Oh, sorry Gus. Second is a liquid, like this water here. A definite volume, but not a definite shape. And the third type of matter is a gas. The gas in this balloon does not have a definite volume and does not have a definite shape. The gas that was in my mouth now is inside this balloon. Let the gas in the balloon go. Whoa! And now the gas will spread and take the shape of the room. So now that we've learned all about solid, liquid, and gas, how about we take a test? Question number one. How many states of matter are there? Is it A, one states of matter? Or is it B, a million states of matter? Or is it C, three states of matter? That's right, the answer is C. There are three states of matter. Question number two. What are the three states of matter? Is it A, lions, bears, and tigers? Or is it B, sun, moon, and stars? Or is it C, solid, liquid, and gas? Well, that's right, it is C. The three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. Question number three. What can a non-Newtonian liquid do? Is it A, it can change color, or is it B, it can change its viscosity if a strong force is applied, or is it C, it can sing. Did you guys guess the answer? That's right. A non-Newtonian liquid is B. It can change its viscosity if a force is applied. So sometimes it could be a liquid, or sometimes it could be a solid. So now that we've learned so much about solid, liquid, and gas, let's go back and tell Ryan. Let's go. So there it is. That's why Ooblack is a liquid and a solid at the same time. Wow, that's so cool. I didn't know it could be a liquid and a solid. Non-Newtonium! Whoa! Bye, thank you for watching. Remember, always stay happy and rise up. Bye! Bye.